It's the off season, so it's time to start talking recruiting, and we're going to do a lot of that on today's show as we get into the 2023 class, the 2024 class of Boston College's first commitment. We'll look into all of these and more on today's Locked On Boston College. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Boston College. I am your host, AJ Black. I'm also the editor and publisher of bcbulletin.com. Check out my work there and make sure to become a premium member. It's just a dollar for the first month and it's a cup of coffee after that. Becoming a premium member gives you all access to everything on our site, along with our premium boards, which are beefing up as we speak, and access to our premium Discord channel with lots of talk and nuggets there. On today's show, we are hitting... The new recruiting season running, and we're going to talk a lot about those new recruits that Boston College is targeting, some of the new names you may want to watch for, and what Boston College might be looking for in the upcoming classes. First of all, before we start into the the grand scheme of the recruits, we didn't get a chance to talk about it because we've been so busy, to talk about Boston College's first 2024 commitment uh, in Christian Zamore, 24 athlete from Everett, Massachusetts. He's the younger brother of Ismail Zamor. He's bought, Ismail is probably going to be known more if you see him on on TV or at a game as Ish Zamor. That's what he goes by. Um, he's a friend of the podcast. We've had talked to him quite a bit um, offline about his visits and things like that. Christian Zamor, we have a premium um, interview up with him, but he's an interesting one to, to, to bring in to start off that 2024 season. Um, he is for obviously a local kid. You love to have, you love to see that, right? Um, you know, Boston College, you want to see them kind of scope the globe for all the best recruits. I mean, they did that for 2022. We had kids from Australia, Canada, Texas, California, everywhere. But you also love to see the local kids stay home. And Zamora is, the, he is talking to him, a Boston College kid through and through. You just got to get to talk, you got to get a read what he says because he has. You know, he just seems like he's perfect for the Boston College program. Um, he's going to get to play with his brother, which he said is a uh, big deal for him. Uh, that was a uh, not necessarily the only reason he chose to come to Boston College, but it was definitely a big one. Uh, he was offered by Boston College back in June. So he's had, you know, he's only a sophomore in high school. I can't even imagine picking a high school, I mean, a college at that age. But he did, and he's going to pick Boston College. So uh, he's the first commitment, and to, uh, just like the class of 2023, Boston College under Jeff Halfley has started with a Bay State recruit. Now, the class of 23, we'll get into that in just a moment. But what can Zamore do? What is Zamore going to do for Boston College? You know, obviously, there's a ton of time. There's two more years before he even signs on the dotted line, before he steps on campus and starts working out. He's 6'2". As I said, he's an athlete. You know, on his page, it says that he plays wide receiver, uh, strong safety, you know, offensive linebacker. He told me when I talked to him that he's getting recruited to be um, a strong safety. And uh, he said that it's more of that like hybrid type of play. So, so I think of him as like Jaden Lars, Jaden Woodbay, kind of like he can be all over the field, play up in the box, play back into coverage. He can do a lot of different things for you that way. So, that you know, I know a lot of you are like, how many defensive backs does Jeff Halfley need on this defense? Well, got another one. So hopefully this is a good one. Um, he he's a big kid. I mean, I you can see the picture up on our site. He's next to Ish Zamore. He looks bigger than his brother. Um, I know he's got some, like taller hair, so that kind of uh, changes the perspective of it. But he looks like a he looks like a college player already, like a big kid. So um, that is the first. And you know what? I, I think that's so interesting because I have you know you see some of the twenty twenty four offers going out, and some of them are just like guys that you just know will never come to Boston College. You're like they have offers from Alabama and Ohio State and Clemson, and they visited you know Michigan, and it's like yeah, they're never going to come here. But then you get Zamora. Zamora does not have a star rating yet. And for those of you who follow along on on 247 or Rivals, that's not uncommon at this point. Uh, most most recruits, it takes a while. It takes them probably until their senior year before they get a star rating. Unless they're like an elite recruit that goes to a camp that those services hold, they don't have enough data to make them rated yet. So he's not rated. He's not in that system yet. So that's okay. He's also... Um, he does not have any other offers. 
he's a local kid again. He does not. He hasn't done like the circuits that a lot of recruits do. A lot of recruits go to camps like you might see him go to like Joseph Griffin was at Ohio State. You might see other guys go to like Penn State uh, for a camp and try to impress those coaches or to visit. Uh, in Griffin's case, he went with his teammate to go and, and play with them. But you know, a guy like Zamore hasn't had that chance yet. So he's still an under the radar recruit. Um, he, I, I would, if I was a betting man, I would bet he sticks with his Boston College commit. He's not the type of guy that's going to, that, you know, get lured away by another school. I think he is Boston College through and through. That's why he pulled the trigger as a sophomore. I think he'll be at BC. You'll probably hear a lot more from him, and I've talked to him. So, you know, he'll be doing visits and official visits and going to games and all that stuff. I mean, if you live in Everett, why not, right? So he'll be getting a chance to do a lot of all of that. Now, in terms of recruiting in general, Boston College has been super busy, and I hate using the word super busy, but like in the last 24 hours, I swear, like they must have offered probably anywhere between 60 and 80 players. Just every every minute, it's like new one, new one, new one, and they are all over the country, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the places they've been hitting up in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you that have made Locked On Boston College your first listen every morning. Maybe you get up and have a cup of coffee and you listen to my sultry voice tell you all about Boston College football. Or you do it when you're taking a walk with the dog and hopefully not slipping on ice. I can't take my dog out right now. But for those of you that have made Locked On Boston College your first listen, that have subscribed on Google, on Spotify, Apple iTunes, YouTube, whatever it is, Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy our podcast. I hope it's an easy way for you to get all the Boston College news and notes that you're hoping to get. And we do this every day, five days a week, and I'm glad to do it, and I love doing it for each and every one of you that listens. This is it. The putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours, but on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software? To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. With visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more. NetSuite is everything you need to grow, and it's all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. Over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite. For the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program for those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked. Again, head to netsuite.com slash locked for the special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Again, that is netsuite.com slash locked. This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black. This is our big preview of some of the recruiting news that you're going to want to know about. Now, Boston College, as I was just talking about, has given out probably about 80 uh, offers in the last uh, 24 hours. Every time you go online, they have a new one that they've offered. But you want to get a feel of where they are around, around the country. And one one place that I've noticed uh, is that they've been really busy in Texas. Now, Texas is a very recruit ri- recruiting rich area that, you know, obviously high school football, they, they, they develop players to play in college football. That's what they do down there. And Boston College for a while was not very active in the Texas area. And credit to Steve Adazio, he kind of like broke that ice. You know, Tyler Vrabel, who just entered, entered the NFL draft, he was from Texas. Vince Ogabase, Boston College's defensive line coach, has been kind of the primary um, uh, Texas recruiter. And he's done a nice job. Like Jaden Williams, the wide receiver from last year, he's from Texas. There's a safety, Jalen Williams. He is a uh, a redshirt freshman, I believe, or a sophomore at this point. He is from Texas. So Boston College has done a nice job of kind of getting into some of those Texas schools. But that's definitely an area where if you want to, like, hit those Catholic schools and those Christian schools down there, you can find guys that are, you know, high three stars, four stars that would consider Boston College because of um, not only the football program, but some of the other aspects, whether it's the 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 
the Catholic uh, background and things like that, or, you know, just the feel of the school. Uh, the other name that uh, they had been com- uh, recruiting was RJ, uh, RJ Maryland, who un- decommitted. Uh, I think Boston College is still involved with him. Um, I still haven't gotten a real full response on where he's at, but um, I still think there's, some, there's still a chance he could come. So Texas has definitely been a place you've seen Boston College being uh, involved. Another area I've seen Boston College very involved is the Midwest. And I'll just say it's basically Illinois and Ohio. And Ohio has always been a Boston College hotspot. That's, you know, where St. Saint Xa- Saint Xavier has been, where they got um, they got Luke Keekley and Stephen Daniels and Ben Glines and, and those oak. Uh, but they've also, they've had luck with, you know, Dennis Grossell and more recently Matt Reeve and Owen Stoudmire were both from Ohio. Well, they, you know, continue to hammer that area. Uh, the Ohio area is mostly... Um, there's a mix of coaches that kind of hit that up. You see Sean Duggan around there, Richie Gannell. Illinois is where uh, the other state, and they have been very active in the Kenwood area, which is right outside of Chicago. That's the school that Boston College landed two commitments for the class of 2021 in Lewis Bond and Dante Reynolds. Lewis Bond probably will you'll see you'll hear more about him in uh, 2022. Reynolds, I think he's gonna, as I said on yesterday's show, work his way up, and you know he's gonna build his 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 body of work up and I think he'll get in there but there are two teammates and they offered a bunch of their teammates that are still currently in high school so uh, Gannell is really kind of getting into that Illinois area and then of course you can't talk about recruiting without talking about Azar Abdul or him uh, he's an animal out there. This guy, <laughs> every recruit that you see in the DMV area is shouting out Azar Abdul or him um, and he's got a whole list of recruits uh, you know, he's got a high. I just I was just posting on Maroon and Gold forums of a 2025 kid that already has an offer from Ole Miss and Maryland. He's an offensive tackle from Washington, uh, Washington, D.C. This kid is enormous, and he's going to need to absolutely rocket ship up the, uh, the charts. The BC got in on him early. So you're seeing Azar doing his his magic all over the country again, uh, and especially around that DMV area. Because as you if you've listened to Halfley, the way that he kind of, just to review his style, he has, he kind of t- tag teams a lot of the recruits. So basically, you have the area coordinator. So like as I said, Richie Gannell is really Illinois, and um, Vince Ogabase is Texas. They go in and they make those initial connections along with the recruiting assistants. They connect, they they make the offers, they watch the film, they meet the coaches, meet the parents, all that good stuff. But they also then bring in the the position coordinate, uh, position coaches. So if you see a Texas uh, defensive back, you'll see the kid thanking and talking about their conversations with um, Vince Ogabase and Azar Abdul Rahim. And then if it's a really big recruit, you'll see them thanking Jeff Halfley, Tem Lokobu. You'll, you'll hear more and more guys. But mostly, those initial stages is the position coach and the regional uh, co- uh, sorry, coach as well. So, you know, Azar Abdul Rahim, because Jeff Halfley has put such an emphasis on recruiting athletes and defensive backs, He's he's like the main recruiter for a lot of kids, and it's not just the DMV area. You know, the guy, the kids from Texas, the kids from California. You see a lot of his names connected to all, all those players, so it's busy. And what's interesting, the last piece I'll get into before we get into the news for the weekend is, you know, we're still waiting to hear what's going on with Frank Signetti. Um, you know, I uh, I saw him liking Pittsburgh football photos on Twitter. I'm still waiting for the official announcement on whether he is going to Pitt. I mean, I imagine he is. I just think it's probably a contractual issue or dotting some I's and crossing some T's at this point. But Signetti, you know, usually when they're recruiting quarterbacks, it's the it's the offensive coordinator who makes the decision on who the quarterbacks are they want to offer or commit with. And they've been offering 2024 quarterbacks as well. So it's interesting because I don't know, I don't, obviously they haven't announced a new offensive coordinator, but with Signetti gone and no one there, they're still offering. But that to me, the way that you kind of think of that through is that you have to imagine that they're going to offer the, a bunch of 2024 kids showing, Hey, Boston college is interested in you. We want to offer you. But they're not committable offers yet. You got to wait for the offensive coordinator to say, "Hey, if this kid's gonna pop, I I want that one first and that kid second. But we will have to wait and see how that works out. So 
It's busy. And check out BC Bulletin and Maroon Gold forums for all updates and news. I am breaking things left and right and talking about the players, talking about their connections to Boston College, whether it's teammates, uh, family members, schools that have connections. There's a whole bunch of different things, that w- ways that you can see how these kids might connect with BC. Give you all that down, breakdowns. And then, uh, you know, I talked to a lot of these recruits myself. So you'll have interviews. We just had one up, I just said, uh, with uh, Christian Zamore. I have some with uh, kids that aren't committed as well. Now, in our final segment, we're going to talk about the weekend, which includes a ho- uh, basketball game and a hockey series that is a dire need for Boston College to sweep. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to make all your wagers, and we, they would like to also wish you a happy new betting year as they continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to get yourself started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of the amazing offers available to you in 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. So head on over to Bet Online, where the game starts. This is Locked On Boston College. AJ Black here. Happy Friday, everyone. I hope you had a good week. Um, I know I did. It's getting a little chilly here, but. We're ready for some hot action this weekend as Boston College basketball will get back on the road. They're going to actually, actually, sorry, not get on the road. They're returning home to play the Virginia Tech Hokies, a team that just beat NC State. Their second game against the Wolfpack in just over a month. Uh, They beat uh, NC State. They just beat Notre Dame, another good team. They almost beat Virginia, and they've, you know, they've hung on against some really good teams. They've also, um, you know, they're only 10 and 7, just like Louisville was when we played them. Uh, oh, sorry, when Boston College played them on Wednesday. But this is a home game. And so it'll be interesting to see how packed uh, Conti Forum can get for a game like this. It's uh, Saturday, uh, a noon game, so it's not too late. Uh, but, you know, with with COVID protocols and the way that the team has, you know, played good and bad, it, you could go either way. You know, the students are back on campus. Um, Boston College needs this win bad. They It, it would be a great chance for them to win, but Virginia Tech is very good, so we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But speaking of games that Boston College has to win, this weekend, Boston College plays a home-and-home with Providence. Providence is a top-15 team in the entire country. Boston College is barely 500. Now, as we said on yesterday's show, Boston College got waxed 8-2 Eight to two in South Bend on Wednesday in a game where Royce Rolton, Rolston, excuse me, had a hat trick. They scored five goals in the second period. Just an ugly, ugly loss. I mean, BC is getting to the point where they're now the bottom half, bottom quarter of the Hockey East uh, bracket. They're not even five hundred in Hockey East. They've got to win both of these games, and, and the odds of them of that happening are are slim. I know that, but. They need to get some points. It's it's getting dire for BC. Um, Jerry York needs to start to figure some stuff out here, or this season's going to be completely lost. Because we're only a week, two weeks away, or a week and a half away from the Bean Pot Tournament, and you know you're playing against BU, Northeastern, and Harvard, three teams that are playing better than you are. They, there's a possibility BC could go in there and finish fourth. There's a very good possibility that could happen, and that would be. Not good. <laughs> Just to put it bluntly, it's not a good way to end uh, end that tournament. So uh, there is plenty of talent left on this team. I know some of the players are leaving soon for the Olympics, uh, but you gotta you gotta figure it out. You gotta get this talent going, and that's up to Jerry York. You're the he's the all time winningest coach for a reason. So you, if you gotta trust anyone to figure something out, it's gonna be him. But this is the weekend. This is such a big weekend for BC hockey that they got they're gonna have to do it. They're gonna have to figure it out. And finally, a little women's basketball uh, news. We'll have all their uh, the, the recap of the Notre Dame game and their weekend game uh, this week uh, on Monday's show. So hold off on that one. That w- the game happened uh, both after we recorded this. But uh, Emma Guy, many of you remember her. She was on the team in 2020 when they played really well, right before the COVID virus uh, shut down everything. Uh, but she is now going to be starting her path 
for towards uh, coaching. She wants she's going to go to the Women's Basketball Coaches Association. Uh, so you want to be a coach program where she's going to take part of a two part day workshop at the convention. It helps them learn the skills and applications necessary to secure coaching positions in women's basketball and increases the awareness and understanding of competencies necessary for success in coaching. So congratulations to Emma. Um, I, she was a, a great player for BC, you know, a great big uh, big man, I call it that, a great uh, forward for BC. Um, and so I know she played over in Europe for a little bit, but now she gets to try the, her hand at coaching. And it'll be interesting to see if she ends up back at Boston College at some point. I'm sure BC would love to have um, a, a um, former player back with the, with the team. And finally, we'll chat a little bit here about our friend Paul, Paul Feinbaum, who says that he, on his radio show, says that it would behoove Clemson and Florida State to join the SEC. Here's his comments. When Texas and Oklahoma joined the SEC back in the summer, I thought that that was, for re- that was it for realignment. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think the SEC is in such a strong position, and I think the world of college football is so upside down based on the attitude like Jim Phillips, Kevin Warren from the Big Ten, and George Klayevkov from the Pac-12 that I think others are going to look for an exit strategy. Instead of wasting time instead of the college football playoff, you have some major universities universities going, you know what? What good is this doing us staying in our league that refuses and will not accept change? Let's call the SEC and see what and see what dollar amount is and we'll get what we are at. And he says, if you're sitting there in a Notre Dame position, why do you join the ACC with that approach? And if you're at Clemson or some of these other schools, Florida State in particular, you have to be asking yourself, why don't we join a Super League and really say who cares what the rest of the college football does? We're joining the only conference that matters. Well, I mean, he's got a point there. I mean, after watching Alabama and and Georgia play for the national championship and how how many championships have come out of the SEC, I mean, he's got a point there. But, man, would that ruin – that would, again, that would ruin the ACC. If you lose Clemson and Florida State, you lose your top two schools, you lose the power that you had to possibly bring in Notre Dame, and you put this conference – at a huge disadvantage. Now the ACC, if that was the case, would be below the Big Ten, below the Pac-12, below, I mean, every every conference possibly beside the Big 12. Big 12 has already been neutered like that. So they would be kind of on the, on the same uh, play, wavelength as the Big 12. But for, for any school hoping to get to the, to the college football playoffs, this would destroy it. Now, Clemson and Florida State, they have flirted with the SEC in the past. We've heard that. Will they do it? I mean, if the money's there, why wouldn't they, right? But I don't see it happening right now. I think that, you know, it seems like the conferences are all in good shape-ish compared to the SEC. But I don't know. How, like, if they go to a super conference, it is going to change everything about college football. I mean, it's already getting there with Texas and Oklahoma. But if they were to add Clemson and Florida State... It would basically be the SEC and everyone else. Basically, they would be one super conference that would be playing one game and everyone else would be playing something else. Uh, so I I hope to gosh this doesn't happen because I, I like the way college football looks now and I don't want to see it completely blown up. But I'd understand it if it happened. We'll have to wait and see if this is just Powell being SEC Powell or if there's actually something to this. This is AJ Black. Thank you all for listening to our show today. We'll be back on Monday to recap the Virginia Tech game. We'll talk about women's basketball and any football news and recruiting news that came up over the end. If you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at AJ Black underscore BC. Just look for the blue check mark to find me. You can also find me at Locked On ACC, uh, a weekly ACC podcast that I do with Candace Cooper. We talk about everything. I talk a lot about football, but we also talk about basketball women's lacrosse, everything in between. So check all of that out and make sure to find us on wherever you get your podcasts and hit that subscribe button. And then if you're listening on Apple iTunes or Spotify, we'd love a five-star review. It really helps uh, boost up our site, our podcast, excuse me, so other people can find us. Thank you all. And we'll see you all again soon. Take care, everyone.